Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for iPad Today is provided by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Coming up, RSS plus iPad equals how you do it. Photo bumping for free. For free? What? And why can't newspapers and Apple all just get along? That's all next on iPad Today. To iPad today. I'm Sarah Lane. And filling in for Leo this time, I'm Tom Merritt. Hi, Tom. Hi, Sarah. How are you? I am full of iPad-y goodness. I'm glad. So I'm I'm sitting in the seat that you usually sit in during TNT, and you're sitting in the seat that I'm in. How does it feel? It feels like Bizarro World. Right? Yeah. Like mom. Like I'm gonna have breakfast your, your for mom lunch Tarrett, or something. And I'm Lara Sane. <laughs> and we're doing some sort of a show about these here iPads. <laughs> Pad, iPads kind of sounds like a, a pig Latin name. What, uh, what case are you using for your iPad? I've I'm got using my the Dodo. official iPad case from uh, Apple. Which a lot of people use. Um, are you one of the people who find it lacking or fine? I find it fine. Yeah. For what I do? Yeah. yeah. it Because it can do this, like right. very, you know, like desk sort of thing. Right. Uh, it's a little bit wobblier when you do it like that. But it works. That's how mine is too. This case, technically, you can have it up on... on the table, and it's fine until you kind of get clumsy and it knocks right over. But I love it. In the morning, I'm actually uh, going through all the headlines and stuff for Tech News Today. I can just hold it like this, kind of on my lap. You know, I don't even have to get out of bed. I can start working. Is that how you, when you're first thing in the morning, yep. you get up, you kind of get dressed, you get in the zone, and that's how you look at stories no, for I, Tech I, News no, Today? No, you, you put way too many steps in. I wake <laughs> up, I reach over, I grab the iPad, launch reader. But that's how I don't you, even get out of bed. you just, you, that's the first thing you do when you're starting to absorb yeah. the stories that you're going to do on Tech News Today later on. Pretty much, the iPad. yeah, yeah. And hmm. then uh, mark them for later to put into a Google Doc. See, you're a perfect fit then. Mm -hmm. it you're already, works you're for a that. real iPad user. You're the real thing. <laughs> I've graduated. You're not just some anchor guy. Right. Some anchor man. I'm not just a pretty in. face. That was obvious. Uh, so for anyone who's wondering where Leo is, he and some of the Twit team are in Detroit. They're going to the Maker Fair this weekend. Very exciting. Can't wait to see what they come back with. So Tom and I are taking care of the show today. And today's theme, we've decided, is readers. Uh, absolutely. Because of the app that I was just talking about. Yeah. Our reader, R-E-E-D-E-R. -E 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 so tell me a little bit about reader. Uh, I mean... Tell everyone else because I technically already All right, know. Turn because off the I mics. Let too. me tell you about <laughs> Give me a little briefing on Reader. No, Reader's great. It's a it's an RSS reader. Yeah. What do you use it for mostly? Um, I what I do is it, I, I kind of use this for tech news today, but a lot of other things. I just have a lot of websites that I want to read on a regular basis, and I learned. Uh, a long time ago that there was just no way that I'd remember to go to any of them to actually go to the physical pages. You know, it's just the RSS dilemma. And I didn't want to have a lot of tabs in my browser. And so what I do is I organize. You know, I've got like people that I don't know, but I think that they're great writers. They're in a little folder. I've got my tech news that's in its little folder. Um, I've subscribed to some folks' collections. Leo has a collection mm -hmm. that he's done through Google Reader. Jason okay. Kotke has a good one. So... That's how I organize my reader. You're a much more sophisticated user of it. Uh, <laughs> I started I started using Reader because it really matches exactly the way I use Google Reader. Yes. Uh, which is to look mostly at unread stories site by site mm -hmm. in their feeds and then star them as things that I'm considering using on the show. And then there was an added advantage that I didn't know until later. So if, uh, let me see, if I go into my uh, my there's 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 how it presents it right as little pages there and it's got the icons for certain sites and i'll just go through and i'll read like all the Ars technica stuff and star a couple things mm -hmm. i like that i can click through easily and read them later right uh i also like because i put a few web comics uh to break up the monotony so when i'm going through all these headlines when the new xkcd comes out for instance forces me to take a break because I'm going to want to see what Randall Monroe has come up with lately, right? With this, I actually can click through really easily and then do the, the resizing and read the comics. It's awesome. Well, and what's nice about Reader is that 
I think it, it threw me a little bit at first because when you first launched it, it this is a Google Reader uh, skin almost, you can think of it as. So it's going to sync up with everything the way that, that you've set up Google Reader, you know, desktop. One or, disadvantage, or I guess, if you don't use Google Reader, you're going to have to go set up a Google Reader account. Exactly. To make it work. The nice thing about this version of Google Reader, the Reader, R-E-E, -E, is that it's very visual and very different. And what threw me a little bit at first was I, I loaded up all of my my subscriptions and they were all there, but they're all in visual form, like a bunch of little notepads. And you do this little, it's like a pinching thing. It's very visual where, let's say I want to look at everything that I've got, like my caught key list, for example. I just go ahead and go, Mwah! so I sort of pinch them open and then. Oh, well, you don't have to do that. Well, but. You can just. You don't do that? No, I just tap You it. don't pinch? No, there's, you just tap. Boom, opens. Well. But the pinching is the cool thing. Yeah, but it's hard. I think you should... St it's not hard. Why would I do that? Because it just makes an animation happen. Well, okay. All right, fine. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm glad you're saying this because I thought that everyone loved the pinch. Oh, yeah. No, I find you're it not, useless. You're, you're, yeah. a, you're a clicker, like, not why a bother? Pincher. Just... Yeah, there we go. Done. All right. Well, fine. For people who like the idea of being able to kind of drag and drop, that's one of the fun things about the iPad. You can use it in the way that you, you can sort of move around photos in a way. It's very photo-like. And I like that, although it took me a while to get used to at first. Because most of us are used to the articles on the left, opens on the right type of a thing. Reader is, it's very unique in that way, and I like that about it. What it's also really good at is exporting. And I don't mean exporting as in, I mean, just if you like a, an article... The options that you have to send it out are limitless almost. It's like you can make a note, you know, so, sort of like an Evernote type of a thing. You could send it to Delicious, to Instapaper, to Safari. You can email it to somebody. You can, you know, uh, I mean, it's it's very robust and you I love that. You can even Twitter, put it on Twitter. From put here. it on Twitter. So I've actually started looking at that and trying to figure out, well, how could I use this to improve the workflow of Tech News Today for mm. the sharing? Because right now what I do is I star it and then I have to go to my laptop and find all the starred stuff and then move them over into the spreadsheet. I wish there was a way that I could share it right to the spreadsheet. That's asking a little much. But maybe there's some interim way. I'm trying to figure out that I could do that. Well, at the very least, what I love about the notes is that sometimes I'll read an article and I'll go, oh, this is so great. And this is what I would want to highlight about it. And this is what I'm thinking right the second. And if I don't write that note down right then, it's like remembering a dream. Uh -huh. and in a couple hours when you and I are getting ready for TNT, say, I'll go... What was I had this really good point I wanted to make, you yeah, know, it's and really it's like handy. some of that stuff you just have to do on the fly. Anyway, that's Reader. Reader's four ninety nine in the App Store, and um, it's it's widely regarded by a lot of folks as as the best. Uh, not by everybody, but it it is a good good um, option. I, I would say busy. it's not exaggerating too awful much to say it changed my life. Yeah. Yeah, because it just made it so that I could still keep up on my feeds. Elsewhere, I didn't. I didn't like any of the readers I was trying before that, so I'd always read all my feeds back on my laptop. This made it easy for me to just star things and flip through things. You know, what we should do so I can take the dogs out. I can, you know, go stay stay in bed a little extra and still be reading all my stuff. Uh, we should have a little bell when someone says this has changed my life. I, uh, we shouldn't use the term liberally. Right. We should really. Some apps change lives. Some don't. That's fine. But if an app is a life changer, we ring. Yeah. The. the Life changing. Maybe for bell. next week. Yeah. I'll get a bell, some sort of a cow bell or a church bell. Second uh, reader app, reader EA, that I want to talk about is early edition. Changed my. Oh, never mind. Did it? No. Do you even use early edition? I launched it once. Okay. All right. So you're not you're not a, a full time user. What's nice about earlier early edition? And truth be told, um, I am a casual early edition user. I like to just keep on top of it because it's different. What's nice about early edition is you import, uh, you can import your Google Reader feeds or, or uh, any type of feeds. You don't actually have to use Google Reader, but you can import your Google Reader feeds if that's the way that uh, you collect feeds, which is, which is the way that I do. So once I import them, what's really great is that Reader or uh, early edition, let's see if you can see this here. That's the GigaOM website and what early edition does is it takes all of the stories, the individual feeds from that particular account and creates a newspaper of sorts that you can look at. So you've kind of got the top story here. Um, you've got your little sort of editorial section and a variety of things. Now you can do that with a single, you know, the gig feed, it's got its own newspaper. You could do that with all of your feeds to make it look like a newspaper. 
It's funny because I feel like Flipboard does this in a very similar yeah. way, but just incorporates a lot more social media right. into it. Right, it's not just an RSS reader. Flipboard does Twitter and Facebook and exactly. their own setup stuff right. rather than being open to just a bunch of RSS feeds. You could put a Twitter RSS feed in there, though, right? Yes, you yes. Know, why not? You can make it whatever you want. Any RSS feed can be part of early edition, and I think it's uh, it's kind of... It's funny, when Flipboard came out, I went, well, this is just better looking than a lot of the other stuff I use. But I have to remember that aesthetically, people have all sorts of different ways that they want to consume stuff. This is, a, this is a consuming type of thing. If you want to sit back and you want to read stuff, then you want your choices. So early edition is a really, really, it's very pretty. It's very pretty. Um, it also has export options and sharing options. Not as many as Reader, but I don't think anybody has as many as Reader. Um, it's also $4.99. It's by Glasshouse Apps uh, in the App Store. Do you Finally. think it's worth the four ninety nine? Because I think Reader is worth more than four ninety nine. To me, that's a bargain for what I, you get. Yeah, I feel like anything that's over five dollars, I get a little. I mean, I've really got to be convinced. It's your squishy point. Yeah, yeah. So five dollars is kind of my. If I like something and I think it's cool, I'll spend the five dollars. Reader, no brainer. Early edition, I would say, check it out. See if you like the visual layout because that's really the selling point and it's not going to be for everybody right. for me five dollars i'm into it for you maybe not oh this was sent by email by ken schwartz oh yes ken schwartz uh sent us an email and recommended this so thanks for that ken all right we appreciate you last one in our little reader roundup is called press reader all one word yeah this was actually introduced to me by my old boss scott art editor-in-chief of cnet uh Hello, scott. and it is a great way to read actual newspapers. So this isn't an RSS feed reader. Uh, for, I don't know if you can see this. You can you can re see the San Francisco Chronicle and the Washington Post on there. And uh, I'm just going to open up the Washington Post. This is from back in May. But you get the real newspaper. Those are those are the comics that were in the newspaper on May 12th when when I downloaded this. This isn't right? even like a fancy iPad app version of a newspaper. It's the newspaper. Right. It is the in in, in fact the actual newspaper. And you you can still click around to navigate. Uh, you can you have a table of contents that you can use. You can go to the front page. Uh, there's you know front page of that day's paper, and then you you can see it's 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 highlighted. So I can I can tap on a page and it'll take me to that full story that I can read in a more, you know, iPad friendly situation and still go back to that next page. And then I can flip through different uh, sections. So if you, if you're looking for the newspaper experience on your iPad, nothing does it like this that I know of. And that would be for all of the ooing and on that so many people do about the way that you can consume media differently on the iPad. There are definitely those people, I'm one of them included, that, you know, I like the newspaper. I like, it's not just the holding of it. I like the way it looks. I just, it's my little retro life. I guess you can't do crosswords the same. No, not exactly. But that you can't, would be one of the only things. You can pinch and zoom and move around, though, so you can kind of make it bigger and exactly. smaller. Exactly. I mean, it looks, it, you're, you're not missing anything that you would miss visually, looking at something in 2D anyway, than you would with a regular paper. What's funny is I thought, well, okay, um, how could this possibly be free because it's a free app? Well, what it is, what it is is the company is Newspaper Direct and they have a variety, I mean like a thousand newspapers that they have access to. Yeah, you can see. I mean, it, the list goes on and on. Some are, you know, All some are the, the big world. guys and some are, you know, more obscure or, you know, regional newspapers type of a thing. The Sun Sentinel Broward edition. For, for example, yeah. yes. So what the deal is with Newspaper Direct, um, the app Press Reader, that's their iPad app, it's free. And then you get like something like when you sign up, seven issues of the newspapers of your choice also for free. And then at that point, it's 99 cents an issue or for people who consume a lot of newspapers every month then it's like ten dollars a month and that just gives you all all you can eat access yeah i think i think that there's an an even more all-in-one um plan for like fifteen dollars a month that'll give you more time you know as archive because the archive stuff doesn't last forever um but you think okay well if i'm just gonna buy a newspaper once a week this the san francisco chronicle for example i don't read that every day but i read it roughly about once a week 99 cents Sounds pretty good to me. And then I just have to have my iPad and I'm not uh, 
lugging around all this paper that I never quite get through anyway. Now, there's also a ton of other readers out there. There's News Rack, which oh, yeah. I know Leo likes. There's Zinio for magazines. Uh, people in the chat room were talking about Sky Grid mm -hmm. uh, for RSS reading, which I don't really love because it does a lot of selection for you. I find it hard to customize, but uh, these are just some of our favorites. Exactly. Yes. If we were to cover every <laughs> reader, uh, we'd be here for really a long time. But these are three of our favorites. Uh, but we definitely want to hear yours too, and we want uh, ideas for our next our next themes, next week themes. And if you want to give us feedback or ideas, or even ask us questions, uh, visit twit.tv/ipt or email us at ipadtoday@twit.tv. So, Tom, I feel like we should talk about what's been going on in iPad Land over the last week or so. Yeah, what happened? Well, <laughs> a lot of stuff happened, but one of the more interesting stories that I have been following is this whole problem that Apple seems to be having coming to some sort of an agreement with all the publishers on how they're going to get their content on the iPad. Yeah, so we just mentioned Zinio, uh, mm -hmm. for, and that is a way to get magazines on your iPad you, you, or, or your iPhone, actually. You download the app, you can buy issues, or you can subscribe to them and have them auto-delivered. Seems like, okay, this magazine thing's been cracked, but Time Magazine is having a problem because they submitted an app to the App Store that allowed them to create subscriptions, say, to Sports Illustrated, which Time Incorporated publishes, right. and Apple rejected it. Yes. And they're not exactly sure why. So what they have to do is come out with a different app for every issue of the magazine and make you go download that And one. the weird thing about this story is that, the story I read on All Things D, is that They've got multiple sources from within time going, we don't really know what happened. Apple just said no at the last minute after we thought that we were clear. And now we're charging for individual apps and this is not the way that we want to do it. And the end consumer is not happy either because I think we've talked about in the past, I don't want to buy individual apps. Right. It's I just, just well, I forget, once. right? You know, I'm going to forget or I'm going to feel, you know, nickel and dimed. I just want to subscribe. Paul Therott and I on Windows Weekly were talking about how great the Kindle thing is because when you subscribe to a magazine or a newspaper, it just shows up. It's automatically delivered. You pick up your Kindle, it's there. Right. And that's what you want. I mean, it seems lazy, but yeah, okay, we're all lazy and we like that. We don't have to want to have to go and launch the app store and search for the app and right. then download it, you know? Exactly. So I don't know. It, the funny thing is, is that Apple kind of goes, hey, we've got a couple different, you know, we, 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 we've got certain ways that you can work with us and we're not trying to be weird to anybody. This is just our system. But they do have individual relationships with Wall Street Journal, for example. So it's, it's very unclear as to why um, not only are publishers being treated differently, but why we can't come to some consensus because the subscription model is pretty cut and dry. Yeah. You know, besides the fact that some are more per year or per month than others, it doesn't seem like this is rocket science. We were speculating on Tech News today that either Apple's developing their own subscription service that they'll put through iBook, mm -hmm. and so they're being resistant to allowing any more of these because they've already allowed some. Because then they're offering exceptions yeah. to their rules. Or they just want to cut. And and, the, and rather than have the subscription sold directly to you, they want to make sure that they work a deal where they get a cut of that subscription revenue. Which is not surprising. You just wonder why someone like Time Inc. hasn't figured this out by now. Yeah, I mean, why, why isn't it just like an in-app purchase where they get their 30%, everybody yeah. else keeps the 70%. That's a conversation. It's, it's, you're probably right. Apple's not ready. They haven't decided what they want to do yet, so... In the meantime, it's still a little confusing for people who want to read their favorite magazines on an iPad, uh, certain ones anyway. So, Tom, let me ask you a question. I've ask been, away. Okay. I've been having a problem. Well, let me tell you. Oh, wait. Tell me what the problem is first. <laughs> oh, where do I start? iPad-related problems. Let's just keep it to that today. Okay, that's probably simpler. Yes. Is that when I launch, let's say I, um, I want to... Is it your dirty screen? Because, man, that thing's smudging. Oh, it's disgusting. I know. I'm sorry. It's, I have very... I have to stop I myself from just reaching over. I eat a lot of potato sleeve. chips. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, I'm glad that you're, you're comfortable admitting that. Well, it's true. It, you know, it's, you can only... Yeah. The pants only absorb so much oil. Do you eat Cheetos, too? Because I see a little glint of orange. I do not eat Cheetos, but, I, boy, do I love those kettle, kettle chips. They yeah. are really good. So, when I, let's say I get, uh, you know, you give me an, an idea for a new app, right? So I go to the app store, I launch it, and I search for the app, I find the app, I, and it says free or however much it is, fine. 
And at that point, I have it. I have iTunes set to always prompt me for my password. Right, so I do the same thing. Just smart, you know, I don't smart, mind putting it in. Little speed bump along the road to security. Exactly. I put in my password, and it goes. Oh, wait a second. Uh, this has been. This account has been hooked up to another computer. Let's verify your credit card info. Oh, geez. Has this ever happened to you? No, this has not happened to me. Okay. Now, there's a difference between the way you and I have things set up, though. I think that's true. Now, Leo and I both. We had the same problem. We were downloading a racing app for a show a couple shows ago, and we both went, whoa, is this some phishing? Like, what is this? We've never seen this before. And then we figured out, oh, what's probably going on is I've got my iPhone. That's my personal account that's connected to my laptop. My iPad is on a Twit account that's mm -hmm. also connected to my laptop, and I'm in some sort of a loop where... Right iTunes is constantly going, wait, who are you? Are, yeah. are we the same person? So, so you'll sync your iPhone. It'll have you on the Sarah account. You'll sync your iPad. It'll be like, oh, must be the Sarah account. Puts the iPad into that mode. Then you go to buy something. You put in the password for the Twit account. And it's like, whoa, wait a minute. I think right. you're Sarah. Which is, it doesn't really say that. It yeah. just says this was accessed for another computer, which is misleading. Yeah. But I figure, okay, I think I know what's going on. But the really weird thing about it is, is that then your your credit card information will come up and it wants you to verify everything. But it stripped out your security code because it, you know, wants to make sure that you're not just like, yeah, that's me. Let me write yeah, down this number. Yeah, and that has number. to do with the, that app store hacking that happened a while back. Exactly. They started putting in that little extra bit with the security code. Which is like, okay, at this point I'm really inconvenienced, but that's fine. I'm, I'm into security. However... If I just don't put in that security code and say okay, then my app gets downloaded. So I'm sort of that like, that shouldn't happen. Hey iTunes, hey Apple. <laughs> that doesn't up. make any I sense. I would love to know. The reason I'm telling the story is not only because I I'm sick of this happening, which I am, but by this point I'm very sick of this happening, and it's happening on my phone as well as my iPad, two different accounts. But I'm getting the same error each time. If somebody prompts me for my security code and I don't put it in, I don't want anything to be able to be downloaded. It should, everything should stop, right? Yeah. Right? Yes. Because still, I would have had to put in my password even to get to this area. So I don't feel like, I mean, if I just threw this out the window, someone couldn't just go app crazy. But it is removing a layer of security that it's apparently you know, that's, a, that's built in and not working. The problem here, Sarah, yes, is Tom. that you're using it wrong. <laughs> You should just be having one account. Why are you having two accounts? Because it's not meant for that. That's too complex and it's ruining your chi. Tom, I'll tell you the truth. Uh, Twit picks up all the apps that I want to play around with on this guy. If all Sarah Lane's bank account was doing it, then I don't know if I would be downloading the Wii Rules and the Speed Racers. Then there's an the easy doodads. solution. Put your personal stuff on Twit too and just don't tell Leo. That may or may not have already <laughs> happened. I'm not sure. I'll have to get back to you. We on better that. hurry up to the next story then. Okay. I uh, want to spotlight a little tip. Last week, Leo and I uh, did a few tips and tricks, and we got a lot of feedback from people saying, Yeah, I like this stuff. More tips, more tricks. So, this is sort of part app, part trick. Have you installed an app, uh, Tom, called Bump? On my phone. On I your have. phone. Yeah. So, you're familiar with the, the, this is one of those things where if I have the Bump app and you have the Bump app, yeah. and we both launch it, we can bump phones and trade contact. It even crosses species. If you're an Android and an iPhone user, you can still bump. Yeah, which is really cool. Yeah. Inter, what is it? Uh, inter, inter, interoperating system. Mating. Compatibility. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> or, we could bump, you know, if you and I met at a party, we could bump phones and we could follow each yeah, other on Twitter. Exactly. Or become Facebook friends, that kind of thing. That's really cool. Well, in the iPad Today episode one, Leo and I were talking about some of the limitations of the iPad, stuff that we wish worked differently. And not having a camera on this guy was, was one of the issues. And the issue was also, you know, and how do you get a bunch of photos over? And you got to email them to yourself. And that's just... Or, or you have to sync it with an iTunes, and it, that's just clunky. What's great is that the Bump app, which is free, by the way, that's a very important part of this, it can also be installed on the iPad app. It's not customized for iPad. you got to do the two-time size if you want it to fit the screen. It's just the iPhone app, but it works on the iPad. And if I have a bunch of pictures that I've just taken on my beautiful iPhone 4, which are very good, right. and I just launch the app on both of these guys, I bump them, for real. and the pictures transfer. Only up to four at a time. So if I have taken 20 pictures, I'll have to bump five uh, times. Right. But still, but that's kind of cool. But it works. Cool, cool way to, to send a couple pictures. So we could do that to each other too. Oh, yeah. Then, right? If I, if I took, 
you and, and your lovely wife, I'm sitting across from you guys at, at Valentine's Day, which would probably happen. Right, as we do. Of us. Yeah, we normally. And I take some really nice pictures yeah. of the two right. of you and you're holding roses and wine and stuff. And then I just want to give them to you and say, we would just bump. Yeah, we could bump iPads together Because too. you would have your iPad at yeah. dinner. Well, actually, we probably Come on. We might. 2011, this yeah. will be. So, of course. <laughs> anyway, this is a great, great little tip. If you want to get, uh, if you, well, if you've got an iPhone or some sort of Android or, or smartphone device that um, that you can run bump on, you can bump it to your iPad. And, the, and it seems really like, it's, uh, by the way, this was a tip from Jeff Jordan. So thank you, Jeff Jordan, because it seems so obvious, but I didn't know about it until yesterday. So you rock. Uh, speaking of emailing, we also have an email from uh, Brett Bell. How is Brett Bell? Well, I don't know. Tom? Uh, would you like me to read this one? Why not? It says the iPad is a device... I was skeptical of at first, mostly since tablet computing has been such a spectacular failure in the past. And yes, I prefer the word tablet to pad. However, after seeing the unit in action, I find myself greatly in one of one, and I believe that the iPad has yet to reveal its full potential. What is most interesting about it is that it is a catch-all of all sorts of media, video, audio, text, photo, and beyond. Yet, it still syncs up with what more or less is a piece of music management software, iTunes. Do you feel that it is time for Apple to change course a bit and come up with a new media manager of sorts that handles all your photos, music, movies, apps, text, etc. when it comes to syncing, not only with the iPad, but also the iPhone? I have to be honest, I kind of feel bad for iTunes. It was a great jukebox that suddenly found itself with all of these welded-on appendages. Brett. Brett, uh, first of all, don't feel sorry for iTunes. They're doing just fine. But I do understand right. exactly what he's saying. And I have... I thought the same thing. For, I mean, iTunes is only part of what I use iTunes for now and has been for the last Oh, few it's years. so misnamed at this it's point. It's so misnamed. Right? And, and I thought it was a slam dunk that they'd call it. I I don't know. I had a bunch of name ideas that I was speculating on. I stuff. I stuff or I la Well, I life is already taken. I, I crap. media or I, I don't know. I, I, I take your money. <laughs> I everything. Yeah. I you. <laughs> but it, that is, I mean, it's a very I good bloated. point that iTunes, uh, another thing about iTunes that um, is the app, the way that apps go through iTunes, I understand that iTunes is sort of the overall store that the other stores are within. You know, podcasts, you and I, we have to, you know, that's iTunes. Right. You know, music is iTunes, apps are iTunes, or they're within iTunes. And then movies, and it's very confusing, but if you're syncing my phone, I don't know. It's just the well, whole I thing gets very confusing. Well, I want wireless syncing, first of all. Mm. I want to not have to plug in my devices to the computer. I just want them to all sync through the cloud. Apple TV can do this, sort of. It right. syncs to your iTunes without being plugged into your computer. It just does it over the network. So I don't see why they can't do this with the other uh, devices as well. And, yeah, I think he's right. I think iTunes has just been glommed on. It's like that that person uh, at work who, as they fire people, they just start giving all the responsibilities to that person, and then suddenly they've got, like, 500 responsibilities. They're doing six different jobs, and they're like, okay, I can do this, but I'm not going to do any of it really well. Right. And that's how iTunes is so bloated because of that, and it it's, does a lot of things really well, but there's some things you're like, why is this so clunky? Uh, I wish they would kind of start over from the ground up. Yeah, I agree, and and it, exactly. You can you can arrive at what you want for the most part. It, it works, but it is clunky, and it doesn't really jive with the whole Apple thing that, you know, Apple, they, they, they try so hard to make everything very clear and it makes sense, and it just works, and this yeah, and right. that. And iTunes... It seems woefully um, neglected. Yeah, one of Steve Jobs' driving uh, uh, inspirations is simplicity. Right. That you, you're more creative when things are less complicated. And iTunes is the other way. It is. It's way too complicated. And I mean, I know that most of us and most of the folks watching the show are well aware of what iTunes does and, and all of its capabilities and limitations. But let's just remember that Let's say that you were switching over, uh, you know, you get your first Mac, right? You know, my mom, I always use her as an example, even though she already has a Mac. But, you know, she gets this thing and she launches iTunes. She's not going to know what's in there. iTunes is music. Yeah, sounds like That's it. That's what iTunes sounds like to somebody who's not really clear on all this stuff. So get on it, Apple.
Jeez. I'm sure they're on it. I know you don't have anything else you have to worry about these days. So thanks for the email, Brett. Uh, we feel your pain. Um, ooh, ooh. We also have a video from uh, viewer Michael, who has his head in the clouds, uh, quite literally. Hi, Leo and Sarah. I am talking to you from 8,000 feet over the Adirondack Mountains. We're on a flight from northern New Hampshire out to the Oshkosh Air Show in Wisconsin. It's a flight of over 1,000 miles. It was all planned on our iPad. We're using the iPads as we uh, go along to uh, help navigate. Uh, we have two of them. My co-pilot also has one indispensable tool and replaces these uh, bags that we used to carry with books and books that had to be revised all the time. And all of this is to suggest that you do a show on aviation applications, uh, not just tools for pilots, but also interesting simulations for everybody. Simulation games, air traffic control simulations. Uh, uh, there are a lot of things uh, for pilots and for non-pilots having to do with aviation. So thanks very much and safe landings. Aww. Roger, Mike, uh, we, we got you loud and clear there with the uh, aviation suggestion. Thanks. I love it. Um, and I think, I think Michael just picked next week's theme for us. Yeah, I know. That sounds great. Aviation There's, apps. That's and a great theme. Plus, you can get a bunch of really cool pilots to write in with their suggestions. Absolutely. Yeah. In fact, another pilot did write in. I'll have to pull up that email and, and make sure that he gets featured next week as well. Aviation apps. So... If you have an aviation app and, you know, flight sim, and all that stuff that, you know, that's that's a big, broad, fun category. If you want it to be covered, write us at iPadToday.twit, at twit.tv. You can leave us a voicemail, 757-504-iPad. Or if you want extra points, thanks, Michael. You get a cookie. Michael just leveled up. from some. Yeah. <laughs> He's cloud level. Yep. Um, you just, uh, just, you know, upload it to YouTube or Vimeo or Michael did something a little bit fancier, but you don't have to be fancy. Just keep it under 30 seconds or so and then email us the link and, uh, we'd love to see you. It's fun to, it's fun to see you. So Tom. Yes. You may not know, uh, that there's a very important part of the show. Uh, oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. That it usually happens kind of towards well, we, the we end. We talked about uh, most of this stuff. What, yeah. What well, would this be? Well, uh, what we do uh, towards the end of the show is Leo and I decide to crown our weekly App Cap award winners. And for oh, that, nice. so, we have to actually wear App Caps. So what? I've got mine. Um, this is my App Cap. There you go. Oh, you mean like this? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Right down the middle. Right down the middle. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's the way they wear it in um, some place that I've been once. Absurdistan. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, and you know what? It now feels like we're graduating. Yeah. So there's that too. Uh, by the way, we have also gotten a few emails from people going, take off those ridiculous caps. You look ridiculous yes that is right kind of the point that's the point kind of the point you know working at twit for the most part is no fun and no games there's a no. small part of each week where i get to enjoy myself and we it's walk out that time. oaken door over there and it's whips <laughs> literally even when leo's gone people throwing yeah, he, buckets uh, of water yeah. on you faster you have to move large rocks building the, the new twit studio yeah on a regular basis so this, don't take this away from us thank you App Cap Award time! Woo! So this is where we each pick a winner of our weekly App Cap Awards. Doesn't have to be about anything in particular. It just has to be something that we enjoy. Should I go first? Absolutely. Especially because yours uh, is going to be more costly for the audience than mine is. Well, that's true. <laughs> My you're you're pick, about to lose a lot of people a lot of money. Uh, in only, a good way. In a fun if, way. Only if they, they can browse... They can browse. No. We're talking, of course, about shopping. And I know that some of the guys watching this show or show will go, oh, gosh, shopping, come on, you're such a girl. Uh, first of all, that's true. Yes, it is. Second of all, true. this app is for men, women, children, or uh, people who want to buy home accessories and sometimes even food. So it really does apply to all of us if we're looking for stuff to buy. Um, and the app is called Guilt. By Guilt Group. Now, you may have heard of Guilt Group because a lot of women and some men have already gotten into to, uh, the cult of guilt, which the idea behind it is that every morning, I think it's 9 a.m. on the East Coast and 12 p.m. on the West Coast um, and all the other times in between, uh, a, a certain um, a brand designer, you know, and these are kind of high-end designers, will go on sale. 
and you know let's say it's hugo boss for example and then between you know at 9 a.m now you've got a chance to go in there and buy stuff because it's heavily discounted now if you go to guilt and you start looking at these prices you may say to yourself well this this stuff is really expensive totally depends on the designer totally depends on the day but i assure you as someone who's been into Bloomingdale's once or twice, this stuff really is on discount. So if you're looking for something specific or if you really like a designer and you can't afford this kind of thing regularly, it's worth looking at. The reason that I like the app so much is because the whole timing issue of Guild is that, you know, if I'm, if I'm really looking for, you know, a pair of shoes, right, and I really, really uh, want to make sure that I have a chance. I've really got to be like paying attention and, you know, at 8.55, I have to stop what I'm doing and get on that. Well, what I did at the beginning was I said, oh, I'll just send myself an email reminder because I'm never going to remember. Well, that just turns into email spam. And yeah. it got really annoying and I had to unsubscribe. And then I kind of stopped using altogether. Push notifications on the uh -huh. iPad. Uh -huh. You so don't you think the same thing will happen with push notifications? You'll get tired of them and start ignoring them. Uh, push notifications are much, much less annoying to me than emails. Much less. Because I just just bypass them. How much have you spent on guilt? On guilt, we'll see the nice I mean thing the about, app. well, um, not that much. I'm very selective because I don't have a huge budget. But the nice thing about guilt is with the iPad app is if you're familiar with the way that guilt works, it works pretty much the same way. Oh, I'm familiar. Oh, you're familiar. You know about guilt. We've talked about this. Yes. Don't pretend you don't know. Oh, God, this really is ugly. Okay, I'm going to wait till <laughs> we get our screenshots afterwards because it's just horrible. But if I want to look at an item and I click inside an item, it's very visual. It comes up nicely. I can scroll through the different views of this item, a dress or a piece of jewelry or whatnot, or a pair of shoes. I can also choose to, to look at it full size. And this really is a lot nicer than the way that it looks on the website. The website works just as well, but the iPad app seems just like a better fit for this type of thing. If you're browsing stuff, I feel a lot more like I'm in a store. Yeah. And what's nice about guilt is that, and you know, and then you can check out and you put your credit card information and assuming that, uh, that it all works well, then you get your stuff and it gets shipped to your door. So, uh, the, it, 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 this is almost less about what you can buy and the way that you can buy it. Um, what's, what is nice about it is that Guilt has, it's sort of one of those like pyramid schemes where if I send you my code, then I get 25 off uh -huh. and then you send somebody else and you get 25 off. So where do, should everyone in the audience send their... Well, I'm not going to do that because no? then okay. it makes it seem like I just want free stuff, but uh, it's a great app. It's a great app for people who, uh, if you like the web uh, version of Guilt, this is a good one. If you've never heard of this before, it's worth looking at. You know, and you don't, you can, you can just browse. You can also, window shop. The Guilt Group spells group with an E, so you feel really fancy. Yes. Yeah. Very uh, across the pond, if you will. <laughs> Mine is Air Video. I just downloaded this last night. Okay. Uh, because I had some video on my desktop and I thought, you know what? I want to like sit in the other room. I, I, I keep talking about laying in bed with my iPad. I, I sound like a lazy, but yeah, pretty much. I'm just bear. a lazy bastard. We got it. Um, and I was like, I just want to watch it on my iPad in the other room. I don't want to have to sit at my computer. So I downloaded Air Reader and or uh, Air Video. And if you don't know, they do Air Sharing and Air Display, the same company. Okay. So they they're very good at this whole networking, like sharing files, sharing display. You can set up your iPad as a second display. And so Air Video works by just you have to be on the same network, finding all the computers on the network, and then you click through to that computer, and you can find all of the files that are shared on your computer. Now you have to install the Air Video software on the computer you want to access. Okay. And in there, you authorize, I want this folder shared, that folder shared. So there's less of a security risk of somebody sniffing around and finding your stuff. But once you do that, uh, you can even set a password. It converts the video to iPad format on the fly. Whoa. And it does it seamlessly. Oh. So um, we have a... Uh, uh, so then what are you... So you're streaming video then? Yeah, you're streaming uh, it over your, your local network to your iPad while being converted. Wow. By the software. So Kelvington, a uh, listener to Tech News Today, made a sort of a weekend edition where he chopped up stuff from the previous. Oh, that's cool. Play, you press play with live conversion and it takes it... Actually, I don't think this one needs conversion because it's an MP4, but it right. takes it and streams it uh, right over to the iPad takes a little bit to get started because sure. it's doing the conversion. But and, then and how hiccupy is it, if at all? But there you go. Now that's streaming, 
it's great. It just moves along. And I, I, I watched awesome. like six episodes of something uh, and never had a problem, never had a crap out. Well, what you didn't have to do is plug anything in. Right. I love it. And you're not taking up space. I mean, if you're just going to stream something and you don't want to think about it again, you it don't even have to worry like about the, storage. It has a little 30-second rewind. Oh, that's great. If you're like, oh, wait, hold on, I need to go back a little, you can just... Oh, I love Air Video. Yeah, Air Video is fantastic. So um, check it out. It is... Uh, I, I can't remember how much it is. I think it is uh, four ninety nine, maybe. I have to... I, we'll, I don't I'll know. I'll look that up. We'll, we'll, we'll show it afterwards. Air video. Yes. Uh, Air video, actually, I'm glad that you recommended this. I'm glad that this is your app cap because it's actually been recommended to readers uh, that I know of. Pat Siani, hope I said your name right, and Rick Greer both wrote in to say that they recommended Air Video for very different reasons. And I read both the emails and went, ah, that's something I should check out. I don't really understand what it does. Now I get it. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty awesome. cool. Yeah. Wow. Makes my guilt group look kind of. I feel like each week somebody trumps my app cap. I'm going to have to step up my game. It's because my hat doesn't fit right. I'm sure of it. All right, Tom. We got through an episode of iPad today. We're done? Wasn't that fun? That was great. I know. Thank you so much. This is really good. You're so welcome. You want to do it again next Thursday? Sure. Okay. Oh, Leo's still out, isn't he? Yes. No, you're not bumping him for me or anything. Well, maybe I will. All right. You play your hats right. Play my, I will play my hats very carefully. You can sit in carefully. my chair. I'll play my hat close to the chest. Yeah, please do, Tom. Oh, <laughs> gosh, these are really hot. Yeah, I love the fezes, but the felt, boy, it doesn't breathe. Tell me about it. It would be good for, you know, Siberia mm -hmm. or something. Well, Ooh. in the winter, you'll, this is your winter <laughs> app cap. Right. <laughs> when they turn off the heat on us eventually here at Twit, right. we'll at least have our app caps. That's it for this edition of iPad Today. Remember, you can subscribe a million different ways or just watch or, or even listen to the audio, although... Something tells me you'll be missing a few things. Just go to twit.tv slash IPT and never miss a show. I'm Sarah Lane. I'm Tom Merritt. We'll see you next week.